Great. Well, welcome everyone uh, to our webinar on a day in the life of a consultant with uh, Propeller Consulting. Um, thank you all for making some time in your day to join us and learn about uh, consulting and uh, project work at Propeller. So um, I'm Julia Ryan. I'm a senior talent acquisition lead at Propeller, um, and we are going to learn from some of our awesome consultants today. So to walk through what we're going to be uh, doing in our session to, together today, um, we're, we're going to have a quick introduction into Propeller, just a little bit of information about who we are as a firm. Um, and then we're going to dive into uh, the meat of our conversation. So we'll meet our three panelists. Um, they'll each give a quick introduction of their career and from how they've ended up at Propeller. And then we'll dive into more specifics on their project work and um, what a day in the life on a project really looks like. So we can answer the age old question of what even is consulting, um, which I'm sure uh, that's what you're here to learn about. And then we'll reconvene, wrap up and go over some next steps, um, some resources to explore current openings on our team um, and some opportunities to chat one on one with uh, some members of my team. Um, before I jump in, I should say, if you have any questions throughout, please feel free to drop them into the chat. Um, we'll have somebody watching the chat to see if uh, questions that are in there could be answered through the chat. Um, and if you have questions for specific panelists, feel free to uh, you know, name who you want to answer the question as well. We're going to try to leave plenty of time at the end for uh, audience questions. So a little bit about Propeller. We are a mid-sized management consulting firm. Um, our original location is in Portland, but we have uh, offices in six cities across the uh, Western US, um, Western being very broad, uh, west of the Mississippi at least. Um, we were founded in 2012, so we're coming up on our 10 year anniversary later this year, which is very exciting. Um, and we have about, uh, this should be uh, 220 plus. We just uh, passed 220 employees. Um, and one thing that is interesting about how we operate is we are a locally based firm. So our consultants have never traveled for work um, and you know, we'll probably never will. Um, we'll travel for specific presentations, go lives, those kinds of things, but we don't have the traditional kind of Sunday to Thursday travel uh, consulting model. So we work with organizations that have HQs in the cities where we operate. Some of the things that uh, kind of distinguish our work, um, we are industry agnostic. The, the main industries we work with um, are technology, healthcare, and retail, um, but we also work in financial services, utilities and energy, education, um, and some others. Um, we are an employee owned company. So everybody, uh, all of us propeller people that uh, you'll meet today uh, and others that are on the call are all part owners in the, the company, which is very exciting um, and you know really helps us to feel like really invested in the company's success. Um, and lastly, engaged in the community. So uh, along with the local model, which allows us to really root our work in the community that we live in uh, and work in, um, we also partner with community organizations in our uh, local areas as well for pro bono consulting, as well as various uh, volunteer opportunities. So we really take being rooted in the community uh, very seriously. So getting into the exciting part of our discussion today. Um, I'll have this slide up just very briefly, um, and then I will uh, take down the screen share so that you can actually see our panelists while they're speaking. Um, so uh, these are our three panelists, uh, and I'm going to go to each person to give a quick intro um, of themselves. Um, so I am going to turn off the screen share so that you can actually see them speaking. So Noel, Tatiana, and Akil, um, I will ask each of you to give us just a quick introduction into your background and uh, career history and how you ended up at Propeller, um, and then uh, we will go from there. So I'll start with you, Noel. Sounds good. Hello, everybody. So my name is Noel Kaufman. Um, I always knew I wanted to be an engineer, so uh, I went to university for it, uh, specifically mechanical engineering because uh, I wanted to work with cars. It was my passion. I really love driving cars and being in cars. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But unfortunately, early in like my university, I got an internship and realized working in a manufacturing plant is not actually that exciting, being in this big closed box manufacturing thing. Um, so I was a bit um, crushed because of that, because I always wanted to work with cars, but finding out the actual work is pretty boring. Um, so anyway, I finished my degree, got mechanical engineering, was looking for employment, and came across this oil and gas um, service company 
And they were like, hey, you want to swing a hammer? You want to work outside in the field? You want to travel the world? And I'm like, absolutely. That is completely exactly what I want to do. So I ended up signing up working for this oil and gas service company who, who I stayed with for about 17 years. Um, those first three years were doing field work uh, as, as I kind of originally got hired for. So it is the, the only really big company I've worked for uh, all the way up until my time here with Propeller. Um, I was going to start offshore Angola, West Africa, super excited, international lifestyle. That unfortunately uh, did not happen a couple of weeks before. They said, you're going to go somewhere else. So I started in California, which isn't that bad. Um, so I worked in the field in California and New Mexico, got transferred to Houston. Um, this organization moves you around like every two years, which is really cool, right? So you get a new role or a new uh, location every couple of years. So I was able to work in recruiting and North, over North America, looking at North America, training and development, both North America specific and then global later on. Uh, did chemical uh, laboratory work. I was a frontline manager in the Middle East. Uh, did software development at, at the tail end, uh, internal uh, development of software. So um, overseeing sort of global portfolio. So it was really exciting to be able to move and bounce around quite a bit. And with that, I was able to move around the world, which is really cool. Uh, a lot in U uh, US, I moved around quite a bit. Worked in the Middle East, like in Oman, like I, I had mentioned before. Lived in Canada, Calgary, Alberta, gorgeous country. Uh, and lastly, I actually just moved from Paris, France. So I was there for about three years um, with the tail end of my career there. So most of my, my career, I was able to work and manage projects, which was really cool, right? I was improving workflows, implementing new training programs, decommissioning and replacing software. So I was always kind of uh, excited to be working on these projects, but I wasn't classically trained in anything. I never really had training, which is why, why I went um, to uh, PMI and got training and uh, got my PMP certification, my project management certification. So to try to professionalize sort of what I had done. Um, my last few positions uh, within uh, that organization were internally facing, internal facing software development. So I was sustaining existing systems, enhancing, developing new stuff. It was really exciting getting into data, business intelligence. Um, it was a lot different than the HR world that I was in for a lot of it, um, but it was really exciting because I was back in this technical world, like my engineering background, like I, I used to and started with. Um, so that was really fun. And lucky the last six months, actually, I, I was decommissioning the major software I was dealing with. So I had a bit of free time um, and I was able to help my peers and my friends work on their projects and sort of help, hey, this is wrong and, and try to come up with solutions, right? Um, and realized in doing so, um, not even knowing it, but I was actually kind of acting like an internal consultant to try to help my peers, right? Um, figure out problems and suggest solutions and kind of deep dive into their projects. It was really actually exciting. So I decided I want to leave the industry, energy industry. I want to settle down. I want to move to Portland, Oregon. And while I was looking, I found Propeller, right? I didn't think about consulting because I have relatives that are consulting and they just traveled all the time, five days a week. And I just didn't want that. I did live that life, right? I've traveled majority of my career. I wanted to settle down um, and found Propeller and they were internal focused, right? They were limited travel, which was exactly what I wanted. A, a smaller firm. I didn't want another hundred thousand person like corporation. I wanted a smaller organization. And like I said, we're about 220 now, um, which was brilliant, right? I looked at the case studies. If you haven't looked at the case studies online on, on our external web page, highly recommend it. It was really fun because a lot of them were like, I would like to be part of this project. I would like to be part of this project, or I did something like this. So it really sort of did trigger like, how great would that be to go and actually help other people solve problems? It was something I did in my last org, sort of kind of not by, I wasn't told to do it. I sort of did it by choice. So to do that professionally is pretty awesome. Um, and actually find a company that really cared about you and the people cared about you. And that's really what came, came about, right? One of the special parts about Propeller is that everybody's just basically pretty amazing. So I've been here as a management consultant for just under a year, loving it. Um, I have only worked with one client. I'm actually rolling off um, at the end of next week onto another, uh, another client, but I'm working with a financial technology company. Uh, they're doing this enterprise wide transformation, basically agile, but scaling it up through the entire enterprise, which is really exciting and challenging. I was on a small team of two at the beginning with these rock star consultants, which really helped me onboard and figure out kind of what it is to be a consultant um, and kind of coach and, and, and mentor me through the program. I got a big certification of uh, like this safe program consultant certification so I could teach and coach and mentor uh, about this framework that they were implementing. I honestly didn't even know what safe or scaled agile was before I started this organization. I'd seen the letters, but I didn't really know what it was. And under two months, I'm already certified to go keep, uh, coach and teach, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, you just kind of got to be a bit uh, adaptable and learn new things and be excited about uh, expanding your search. So yeah, it's been, it's been a wonderful um, adventure so far. 
Um, I guess lastly, my two key things about what I physically do is that I'm actually, I have two kind of responsibilities. One is coaching, actual consulting, right? Coaching and advising leadership uh, and the team on how, how processes should work and, and implementing this scaled agile, but I also do work. I'm actually sitting in and acting as a, an employee of this company and acting as what they call a release train engineer. So I'm, I'm managing um, and facilitating meetings, uh, planning, quarterly planning organizations within their software development world. So I'm kind of juggling two things at the same time as a coach, as well as actually, you know, sitting in and doing the work with the, with the organization. So that's a bit of my background. Now I got the propeller. Awesome. Thank you so much, Noel. Um, we will uh, we'll return to a little bit more about that project um, shortly. Um, right now, I want to kick it over to Tatiana and hear about uh, your background and how you ended up at Propeller. Thanks, Julia. So I'm Tatiana Narvaez, and I have a chemical engineering degree and went directly into the industrial gas industry, where I rotated through various roles within Air Liquide, um, but I spent majority of my time as a product supply manager for their pipeline network. So we were delivering uh, different types of industrial gases to our customers in the oil and gas and chemical industry. And it was in this role where I was optimizing product supply chains, planning production outages, assessing customer supply risks, and implementing action and communication plans. And towards the tail end of my time with Early Key, I, I pivoted to a project manager role where I was able to manage a small group of engineers on a data transformation project, which Kind of ties very nicely into my project that I'm on right now or engagement that I'm on right now, um, coincidentally. And it was in this PM role that I discovered how well um, and easily my skill set in operations uh, transferred over to project manager. So um, as far as my time with Air Liquide, unfortunately, from a personal and professional development standpoint, I just felt like I couldn't advance my career in the way that I wanted to within uh, this company. So I, I knew I wanted a career that would challenge me uh, because if I'm being challenged, that means I'm learning and growing and that's just a, a top priority for me. So um, I also knew that I could leverage my experience in real-time operations and of course, project management in the consulting world without ever having formal consulting background. So I joined Propeller in February and um, really joined this, this firm because it gives me the challenge that I continuously seek um, and also the, the support to learn and grow along the way. Great, thank you, Tatiana. Um, and last but not least, Akil, you wanna tell us a little bit about your background before Propeller and um, how you ended up here? Sure, it's very nice to meet everyone. Um, so I began, began my career in hospitality, working with Marriott International uh, and Starwood Hotels and Resorts at the time. Um, I stayed on with Marriott International after the acquisition of Starwood Hotels and Resorts. I learned a lot um, and I did end up studying business and hospitality uh, when headed to uh, college. Uh, after being in a variety of operational leadership roles in the industry, I decided I wanted to enhance my skills. So I took on a few certifications, Six Sigma, PMP, change management, just to really kind of up level. Um, at that point, I realized that I wanted to go even further. I enjoyed the learning component, so I decided to pursue my MBA. Um, towards my MBA, I started realizing that I liked uh, the problem-solving aspect. I liked uh, working on unique challenges and really just kind of focusing on learning and continuing that drive. Um, so the continuous education really stood out to me in that case of what you would go through at a consulting firm. So I started researching them. I looked at a variety of different consulting firms, large ones, small ones, and Propeller really stood out to me due to their values and ethos. Um, so I reached out to the team um, and went through the process. Um, I've been with a few different clients now. Um, and when I, as I've been working with Propeller, I realized that I enjoyed the more data focused projects. So I moved into the data and analytics practice um, and I currently help uh, lead that team. Uh, my current engagement consists of working with a large client within the del delivery app space on their machine learning personalization functionality. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone. I'm popping in real quick. My name is Dory Grant. I'm uh, one of the talent acquisition leads here at Propeller. We're very excited to have you all here today. 
Um, thank you to uh, um, our wonderful consultants for joining. And uh, I think the next kind of question that we all want to know and hear about, as you all have started to mention, is the client work, right? The 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 real work, the projects that are are happening. Um, Akil, you're right here in my screen, so I'm going to pick you to kind of kick us back off. But yeah, maybe you could share a little, <clears throat> excuse me, just a little bit about, you know, one of your more recent projects and kind of what that looks like. Um, I think that would be, that would be a great place to start. Absolutely. Um, so I was based um, with the technology security services software company um, headquartered in the Netherlands, or, and they had a unit within the, within the Americas division as well. So a typical day for me would be to focus on having perform due diligence, meeting with stakeholders, doing some homework and research. And really the project was to kind of drive and improve their KPIs overall, ensure that they were looking at the correct uh, metrics. Uh, so after having a few due diligence meetings with some key stakeholders, I would check in with my performance manager or account leader uh, for some support just to ensure we're aligned on a game plan moving forward. From there, I did perform more focused data research on some of the learnings uh, just to ensure you know, we're driving towards the end goal of value creation for the client. From there, some of my work focused around cleaning, organizing, and structuring data uh, for sample tests. Uh, the next phase uh, would be running some uh, statistical analysis to look for just kind of correlations and how we can drive some of the sales movements and how we can change some of the behaviors to enhance revenue and other key KPIs. Once a strong correlation was found, I'd look then to connect that to business impact. So how can we modify processes? How can we improve um, and really tie it back to, like I said, the value creation. Um, from there, we try and put it into practice and make it something practical. With that said, uh, that would move into more of a presentation and or informal documentation to leaders just to share findings and make some recommendations. So that's kind of an overview of how um, a day in the life uh, one of my projects would be. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, well, Tatiana, what about you? You've been here since February. What's, uh, what type of client engagements are you working on? Yeah, so I'm on my first client engagement shortly after I joined, which was really fun, but I'm currently at Adobe for a data transformation project of theirs. So essentially at, at a high level, they're really trying to leverage a lot of the data that we have sitting in various systems, you know, across Workday, ServiceNow, um, but what's good, what, what the, the data is kind of just sitting there, not really transformed in a way that's usable. And so my project's goal is to grab that data, centralize it, and kind of be able to leverage that for some data and uh, analytics. And so as a project manager, you know, similar to Akil, kind of looking at weekly syncs um, with my clients and, and teams and stakeholder engagements, um, this project specifically, because it is in the software space, we are utilizing agile methodologies or scrum methodologies. So we're conducting, I'm conducting sprint huddle meetings with the team, making sure that all of our user stories are getting done within our sprints, um, following up on action items, kind of uh, hurting a bunch of cats sometimes. And a big part of, uh, part of that uh, role is also reporting on program progress. So just to make sure everyone's aligned on where we're at, what are the risks, um, what's upcoming, what's been done, what are accomplishments we can celebrate, um, holding project kickoffs. So if there's a new work stream that needs to come up, so what does that look like? So what's super interesting in this engagement is we don't have just one work stream that's, I joined when I started, when it started, it, it's, we have some in-flight work streams, we have some projects that are gonna be kicking off next month um, and some projects kind of uh, tapering down and wrapping up in the next couple of months. So kind of navigating projects through all the different life cycles and um, definitely a, a big part of this is with the project, um, it's also trying to transition the client to more of a program model. So how can we run the business with this? And it's not just, once the project is done, no one ever takes care of it. So a lot of that is really looking at what processes and what documentation we need in place, um, what artifacts and supporting materials do we need to deliver. And so uh, thankfully, I also have two change managers on my engagement that I'm able to leverage to help with some of those communications. Awesome. And just a few moving parts that is, you're working on uh, any given day, <laughs> just to say the least, for sure. Gosh. 
Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, no, you had started to talk about the, your your client engagement as well. But yeah, would love to hear, um, you know, I think something we haven't talked about is like also size of clients, right? When we're talking about different team engagements, um, maybe you could share a little bit about just kind of what that looks like on your team, Bill. Yeah. Um, so uh, if, if you're talking about the, the size of the people like I'm working with, like this. Yeah. Scope. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, exactly. So I'm working with um, a company called Early Warning. One of their big deliverables or their solutions is, is Zelle. So um, transferring money, if you guys have seen Zelle. So they're going through that big agile transformation from basically a project management into kind of program management, uh, like a lot of companies are doing, trying to be a lot more agile. Um, and so who I work for, I work with the change management team. Um, so there are three directors, senior directors that I deal with daily um, who drive different kind of components of, of the change management. Uh, one person sort of helps drive and is the person I, I go talk to and work with dealing with uh, me being the release. I'm basically the acting release chain engineer driving those meetings, those conversations, those syncs with leadership, um, those planning um, you know, workshops and ceremonies that we do that are often multi-day workshops. Um, so on the daily, I'm dealing with with uh, that uh, director, and then I have the two other directors that a lot more with processes, governance, um, uh, business systems, business intelligence, um, implementing the workflows, um, training material, a lot on that. So um, I primarily deal with three main people with a support of maybe five or six other. I think the organization is right around a thousand people, um, at least the world that we're kind of impacting that, that are transitioning over to a much more agile um, organization. So, um, yeah, my day is split between managing and facilitating those existing uh, meetings and, and acting as an RTE. And the other side, I actually have kind of freedom with. Um, they do direct and say, hey, I'd like this as a priority, get something done in the next week or two. Uh, but honestly, I've created my own priority list of, of what I think needs to be done based on conversations with, with them, with, with the other people, uh, other leadership. Um, and prioritize. And so I get to create training documentation, communication plans, uh, you know, delivery plans, um, new go governance and process uh, processes that they should implement to help improve uh, what they're doing today so that they can achieve this business agility so that they can uh, deliver, you know, higher value, higher, quicker, or much quicker value um, to, to the consumers. Um, so mine is uh, kind of aligned with some of the others, um, but it's exciting, lots to do. Awesome. Thanks, Noel. And uh, thank you, everybody, for walking through those projects. There's like so many components of, uh, of what's going on. And I think the answers really help to uh, conceptualize the, the question, you know, what's a typical day look like? Um, I think the reason a lot of people go into consulting is because there really isn't a typical day. There's a lot of things going on, uh, a lot of different people to communicate with and engage. Um, and as Noel said, keeps it exciting. Um, so want to uh, start with Tatiana this time. So this is a question that we got in the chat. Um, what are some challenges that you have encountered in your client work and how do you go about uh, kind of facing those challenges? Yeah, that's a really good question because I'm new to consulting as well and I kind of had the same thought of, okay, well, you know, the project or engagement that you're on, those are technically not, it's not your performance manager, it's a, a different setup there. So what I've seen in my engagement so far is whenever there's a challenge that presents itself, it's kind of first and foremost is listening to the client, making sure that you're really understanding what is the challenge um, and what's the problem that they're facing. And then kind of taking a step back and being able to see how the dots connect, right? So if, if your client, if you first listen to them and really hear what they're, they're concerned about, you know, you can kind of either decide, um, yes, that, that's a concern that we haven't addressed or we're addressing it this way. I think bringing visibility to all the different aspects that you're tackling will also help with some of those challenges. So um, I think a big, a concrete example so that we kind of ground this is my project, like I said, joined in flight. So a lot of the previous documentation was not there. And we're kind of finding that we're discovering some bugs in our implementation because we had poor assumptions or lack of documentation. So the first is kind of a triage, let's stop the bleeding, let's come up with an action plan to fix these bugs. And then from a PM standpoint, how do we avoid this in the future? How do we get better at uh, preventing and, and minimizing this? So that would look something like holding a retrospective. Um, so just really focusing on what went well, what could have gone better, and then what, what do we want to do moving forward to um, an agile terminology, but I think we all do it to some extent. 
but it's kind of looking at short term, long term, and then making sure that my PM, so my performance manager within Propeller, is aware of what's going on. What are the big setbacks to timeline? Um, do we have a constraint or a bottleneck now? And what do we need to do to fix it? Because I know, um, obviously, perform my performance managers is talking with the client as well. And, and the way that I approach it is just you don't want to catch them flat footed or off guard if if the client presents some concern. So it's just really making sure you're communicating on both ends. Um, and, and definitely, I can't um, focus enough on just listening to your client and making sure you, you captured that that understanding. So hopefully that answered the question. Definitely, thank you. Um, Akil, what about you? What are some challenges that you've encountered in your project work and how do you go about uh, solving those? So uh, being a consultant, you're, you're gonna encounter lots of challenges on a regular basis. Uh, typically it could be from anything from stakeholder conflicts, um, competing visions, competing goals, to come more or less just hey, we want to use a certain technology over another. Um, from my end, it's more or less breaking down communication, uh, finding where the opportunity is for ROI for the company in totality, and really just doing what fuels the long-term strategy, um, which could sometimes be supporting one idea over another, but really just focus on, hey, what is the strongest way of creating value across the board for the organization in totality? Uh, but really, I've discovered from my end, aside from using a structured process to solve a problem where you're defining it, you're going through your hypothesis phase, and step by step, a lot of it is around communication and just kind of focusing on that avenue of just keeping all the stakeholders on board, letting them know what's going on, proper status reports, and just managing those risks as you're going through uh, with proper risk mitigation plans. Definitely a crucial aspect to any uh, successful engagement, for sure. Um, Noah, what about you? What are some challenges that you've encountered? Um, so I think one is um, recognizing and knowing your stakeholders. So it, whether that's internally, the, 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 the people that you're essentially reporting to and working for, knowing what they care about, where their value stands, what are their priorities. Um, you often have to deal with like it's a bit ambiguous right often they're not going to give you the exact details of everything you need so you have to then make assumptions you have to revert back good communication making sure that you know it is clear exactly what you do need to do uh, sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong but um, you kind of want to fail fast fail small right i mean so so make your assumptions talk back to them um i think the other one is 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 if you do have issues, it's it's all about openness and clarity, right? Work with them. They, they're trying to you know, help you. And as an organization, we're all trying to work, move together in the same direction. So if you do have these issues, um, be open and honest about the problems that you're having and communicate and work with them and set up a meeting if you need to. Sometimes it's hard to get their time. Um, but uh, if you can focus on what will help them the most with the company, help the organization, help bring value to the organization or help them as, as a stakeholder, um, usually you can work together and try to try to figure something out that will prioritize your time because that's that's another key thing Akil kind of hit to it a little bit like we want to focus on the value we may only be there for a short amount of time so if you do have issues um, maybe that's a blocker and you need to skip and pivot and go work with something else um, because you may not be there for a long long time some engagements are only three months right so you want to deliver as much as you can in that time no, Noel, you had touched on something earlier. I kind of wanted to circle back to, which was you were talking about the safe certification. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, is a, is a value add with Propeller is the professional development opportunities, right? Through coursework and learning and development. Um, I think also that kind of ties into some of, you know, the supervision and your, your PMs and the work and support that comes with that. So I guess two part question, but yeah, I wondered if you could kind of touch on what are some of those opportunities on the profession, professional development side that you've utilized or look forward to, to, to having? Um, and then, yeah, maybe you could just talk a little bit about just kind of that, that management support that you're also receiving. Awesome, yeah. yeah. I'm really happy you asked this because I love l and I was able to be part of the learning and development and recruiting world uh, in my last org, and it was just absolutely fabulous. So one of the biggest things, so I came from an organization which uh, were entirely engineers almost, except for like the lawyers. 
Um, so very kind of one-sided, we can figure it out, we know best, completely no push for any external professional sort of frameworks or certifications or anything. It's like, oh, we'll just teach ourselves, um, which can work. It is okay, but there's this component of sort of professionalizing, and I, I've said that before, like professionalizing truly what you do. It's why often people go get their PMP or other, you know, agile type certifications or in any other field, uh, or into obviously getting a bachelor's or master's or something in, in another, another topic. That's something that propeller does very well um there is a stipend that you can use I, there was a little bit of a chat in the chat but um super super helpful um i actually use this for both of my certifications it kind of spoke out of order just because it flowed but the idea is that it was my my pmp was actually um through um propeller which which certainly helps right it helps me as a as a person and an employee to enhance my skills but obviously it helps propeller itself to uh, ensure they have people with diverse uh, knowledge and skills, which really can go work for different projects and different companies. Um, so I think that that is a very, very important part and a huge sort of almost like culture shock change that I had coming from my my other organization into this is that they do think ahead. Uh, they do want you to learn and grow and they do give you the freedom to decide what that is, right? My next thing may, I think is going to be in data analytics world, right? Because I'm part of the, uh, the same initiative that Akil is uh, in the DNA world. So I want to start professionalizing that because I learned via Google and YouTube, but now let's let's kind of get it, get it right so it's professional. So yeah, full support. Um, and you talk with your performance manager basically every week, half an hour chat. And, and a lot of those topics are about your, your training, your learning, your competencies, what you're doing, what you can do to grow and learn. So fully supported. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's really nice. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Tatiana, what about you? What's, uh, yeah, what's on the horizon for um, some professional development? Yeah, so I'm actually part of the mentorship program that Propeller offers, which has been incredible. So joining my engagement, I felt a little bit overwhelmed. Um, again, new to consulting and the project was just such a high stakes project and there was a lot of critical go lives in the next few months. And so kind of expressing that very transparently and openly to my performance manager, um, that was just one, like a breath of fresh air that she was able to hear me out and kind of come up with an action plan of how we're going to up level some of the skill sets that, that I already have. And so I think part of that was really, um, even though it's not professional development, I think it's like it sets the ground the groundwork or the foundation for it is our competency matrix. And I think looking at that competency matrix, I was able to kind of instill some confidence in, okay, there are skills and experiences that I can translate into this engagement. And we really broke it down um, engineer here. So I, I like to break things down into pieces that I can digest. So we broke it down into what competencies we want to focus on or what competencies that I can really leverage, what, what are strengths, what are areas of improvement that I can leverage for this engagement, and then pairing me with a mentor who was able to then kind of help me in, in the day-to-day -day stuff for my client and delivery. And so um, open and honest conversations with my performance manager, mentorship program with, with another consultant to give me some feedback on their experience in, in Agile and in something that's more related to my engagement has been super helpful. Um, and definitely looking forward to, um, again, just joined a few months ago, but I probably can't keep saying that for much longer, but in the future, definitely trying to use the, um, the stipend that Noel mentioned of uh, to be able to get some certifications on scrum methodologies. And so that will be exciting. I love it. Plan in place. You're ready. Yeah. And um, thank you for sharing also just a little bit about just kind of the onboarding and, you know, joining as a new consultant and kind of that transition. It's it's a real thing, but great to hear, you know, you have that support and, and also just raising your hand when you do have those questions and continuing to move forward. So really appreciate that. Um, I will also quick mention the the L and D budget that um, uh, everyone's also sharing about. That is an annual thing, so it's not just an addition. That is um, for you as a, a new consultant or member joining at Propeller, but it is an annual stipend. Um, and shout out to Propeller as well. That also we increase that as um, over the years as well. That um, to continue to invest into its employees. So. Akil, what about you? What are you learning or what's next? What's next uh, for you as you think about developing yourself here at the firm? So I do love learning. Um, it's something that I am passionate about. Uh, from my end, the firm's been extremely helpful uh, for learning and development uh, from my end. Um, 
our learning and development team is huge in terms of being able to offer and point in the right direction of the resources that you may be interested in and want to upscale your abilities on. Uh, from my end, I've learned a lot from my managing director, performance manager, and account managers. There's a ton of support there. Uh, in terms of specifics, uh, I'm working on learning a little bit more about business development because it's not one of my strengths per se. So I've identified that and now I'm going through a step-by-step -step process to see how I can improve that. And then just for my own self, uh, in terms of being able to do good work, uh, one of Propeller's ethos, I'm going to work on myself by trying to improve my ability to develop a more machine learning uh, ability from a programming standpoint uh, through one of the data and analytics uh, education platforms uh, that the firm helps provide. Awesome, thank you. I love it that you know everyone shared a bit about development on where they want to continue to move from certifications or to, you know what like what you were mentioning as well about yeah wanting to skill up on the the business development side too. Um, Maybe Tatiana, if you have you considered any of the internal initiatives or some of those other opportunities now that you've you've joined the firm? Yeah, so um, I think definitely have considered internal initiatives. I think it's really um, just a timing standpoint, right? Like definitely wanted to make sure that I got my legs underneath me on the client engagement, but actually recently spoke with my performance manager to talk about internal initiatives and where I would like to engage. I know we have um, an internal initiative to engage with uh, nonprofits in the community or just community uh, outreach programs. So I think that's something, I'm actually in Houston, gonna be moving to Denver as part of the Denver office. So I thought that'd be a great way to not only give back to the community, but just to learn more about the new community I'll be immer immersed in. So I think that's one of the initiatives I'll, I'll be most excited to, to join. Awesome. Yeah. And for those listening as well, the internal initiative. So this is something after you join the firm. Um, oh gosh, it's a little like choose your own adventure. There's a number of different opportunities between yeah, uplift uh, communities and nonprofit work. Um, we have a great Propel Her initiative, um, social committees. I heard Portland is going karaoke or doing karaoke on Friday. So some really cool social activities happening. Um, but Noel, what about you? Any other internal initiatives or things that you're working on? Yeah, so actually quite a few. Um, it is a tricky balance, right? Because you, you need to work for your client, but it's also absolutely brilliant. You get the, the opportunity to help and look inward, right? And help the organization. So uh, part of a, a data and analytics um, initiative uh, with Akil. So we're working on the learning and development part, formalizing kind of competencies, skills, uh, personas. Uh, in that world, uh, I'm leading an initiative for um, learning and development and, and optimizing the, the software that we as uh, Propeller are using to manage our own learning and development pathways. Uh, I've helped out with pro bono work, so I do some um, uh, some work with an organization uh, out of Atlanta um, and, and helping uh, it's basically with surveys and managing their data and, and, and being able to communicate how, how best they should communicate with, with the people that are involved with their organization. Uh, and I've also leaned in with recruiting because I love recruiting. Um, so yeah, I, I've uh, spread myself thin sometimes, but uh, it's all for really good fun and good people and good help. So uh, yes. Sure. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I, I think that seems to be a, a theme with a lot of propeller folks is just, yeah, ra raising your hand to, <laughs> to more than just a few um, different internal initiatives. And that goes consultants as well as um, any internal members. Uh, Julia does some incredible work over in DEI. Um, yeah, I'm a part of the Propel for initiative as well. So it's fun to be able to work with your performance managers to balance out some of that internal work um, as well as, yeah, cl client work is also still <laughs> very important. Uh, awesome. Well, I'm going to, Julia, I think you had a question and wanted to share a little more. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, we got a couple of people curious in the chat. Um, I'd love to uh, ask each of you about your uh, personal experience with the interview process with Propeller. Um, kind of, you know, any any highlights that you want to point out, and then um, what are some tips that you have to be successful in the interviews? Um, you know, especially coming from non-consulting backgrounds, but um, you know, just in general. Um, so I think we can start with Akil. Sure. So uh, from my end, uh, in terms of 
tips and tricks, I would certainly say, think about what's most applicable and relevant within your experience, uh, which showcases your consulting skills. So you may not have a formal consulting experience. That's okay. As long as you can showcase those skills, whether it be project management focused, or you can show you have the ability to deal with key stakeholders and plan and try to be one step ahead in that case, you're on the right track already. Uh, I would certainly recommend explaining your career trajectory step by step in a logical fashion uh, so we understand your successive positions and how it made sense in your overall career journey. Um, I would certainly say leverage your star and car methods, dive deep into the challenges, explain them. Uh, what did you get accomplished? What was the impact? How, how was the team involved as well? Um, for my own self, um, I used external resources that did certainly help me in terms of uh, reading up on books, going through practice case interviews with some of my classmates and some of my friends. Uh, there are quite a variety of resources out there as well that can help you uh, just kind of uh, improve that muscle. But that's what I would recommend. Awesome. Thanks, Akil. And I should have uh, I should have laid out before um, I kicked it over to Akil that we do have a four-step hiring process. So our interview process starts with an application review. Every single application is read by a real person on our team. Um, after application review, uh, then the interviews start. So we have a pretty standard phone screen. Um, and then we have a Zoom uh, meeting with either a consultant or a member of our leadership team where you'll dive into a specific project example from your past roles. Um, you'll go over a hypothetical scenario of a, a project on awry in one way or another um, and how you might go about solving that problem. Um, and then we always leave plenty of time for your questions. The next step after that is very similar in format, but it's with a member of the leadership uh, or senior leadership team. And then the last step in our uh, our interview process is the business case. So um, it sounds scarier than it is. Um, our case is not the uh, the type that you would find in like McKinsey's prep materials. It's much more focused on just figuring out how you plan and organize and think through um, a problem. Uh, so it's a three hour time block. We give you the information at the top. Um, and then uh, you have two hours independently to uh, create your deliverables that are centered on that information. And then the last hour with a couple of our team members to discuss what you came up with. Um, so that is, uh, that's the process. Um, and I apologize for not laying that out earlier. Um, but I'll ask you, Noel, how did the interview process go for you? And what uh, tips do you have for applicants? Yeah, uh, I'm glad you brought up the whole business case case study thing, because I didn't know anything about this, right? I don't I'm, was never a consultant before. And when I started, when I saw that this was a thing, I started Googling and looking at and it sort of freaked me out um, because it seemed like this crazy in-depth, like super stressful, like people would write like, you know, thesis is on this type of stuff and how you prepare. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to take a class to, to answer a question. So, but luckily, um, as it was very nicely said, you know, it's less extreme. It's not something like that, but the concept, the process, it's all the same. Um, so I would recommend preparing, practicing, um, looking at some of these, I looked at case study examples and sort of try to chat it out and put some together, write it down on paper, go through the process. Uh, if it is something new that you've done, uh, it's essentially just problem solving, making assumptions and, and explaining your thought, right? It's not that it's not essentially in most interviews, right? It's not just here. Like you care less about the thing that you're saying. It's more, how did you get to that thing? Right? So your assumptions could be right or wrong, but as long as you explain and you have reasoning, it's all good. So that whole case study, put some effort in it. Don't freak out. It's not like McKinsey, um, but you should work through it ahead of time is one of my big ones. Um, what helped me too is my projects. I've been lucky. I've worked on a lot of projects uh, throughout my years. So I actually had to write them down and put you know, who did I work with? What were my challenges? What was the value? What did I physically do? What was the output? You know, why was I the right person for this project? And actually map those out and have an example of five, 10 of those um, to answer a lot of these questions. And th this goes for everybody. This isn't just for propeller, but like to be able to really organize your thoughts. Uh, Cause if you have had a longer uh, career in the industry, sometimes it's, it's stuff just sort of meshes together. So you kind of want to break those out, make sure you have a good understanding. Um, and on tools, uh, Akil kind of mentioned this, like I, I actually, I mean, I used a resume tool and it actually helped me a lot organize my thoughts because I hadn't touched my resume in 17 years. So uh, 
um, to be able to organize and facilitate and, and roll up and put the right pieces in the right places. Um, actually, an online tool really helped me kind of facilitate that, um, where me working with a Word document from my college template just didn't do it. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, put a little prep in. That's the very helpful. Good advice, Noel. Um, Tatiana, how about you? How was the interview process for you? And what tips do you have for people to be successful? Yeah, so I'm not sure I'll give much more than what Akila and Noel have already shared because I had a similar experience where it felt a little bit daunting when you hear there's a business case or four round interviews. But I think really what I come back to is kind of breaking down um, Propeller's website to really get a feel for who the who the firm was, what they care about, and then definitely the case study. So um, that was just a really great knowledge and information that I could kind of go to and really start mapping out what experiences, not just in my project manager roles, but in my real-time operation experience, um, what experiences kind of align with what, um, with what the case studies are showing. So stakeholder engagement, action plans, um, you know, project timelines, things of that nature. So I think it was super helpful to be able to really look at my experience, kind of write down everything that I've been able to do and how that maps with certain case studies or how you can kind of transform that. And also, yeah, it, it isn't just traditional because if you Googled consulting um, business cases, you're gonna get a bunch of different uh, formulas and frameworks. And I think it's just really condensing it down to something that's resonates with you. Um, I, I know that that might sound a little bit cheesy, but really what I think stands out to me is I was able to just authentically show what, what I know and be able to show up who I, who I am and what my experience was. And um, that was just talking through, like Noel said, it's not really what where you get, but it's how you present it, what questions you're asking, how do you engage with your, with your stakeholders or, or your panelists in your, in your interview. Um, that was, and, and while it's super rigorous, the, the interview process, I will say on the other side in the firm, it, um, it's there's a method to the madness, right? Like every person that I encounter is not only dedicated to refining and upleveling their skills at Propeller, but they're more than happy to help and support and collaborate with other consultants. So I think that's just kind of a, a testament to, to why we go through such a rigorous recruiting process. Thank you for sharing that, Tatiana. That's great insight. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of practice um, some of those messages about the work that you've been doing. Um, definitely uh, learn a little more about the interview process and kind of get ready for that business case. Um, we're going to share out also an interview quick guide after this for everybody that's joining today. So it's a great way, just kind of a nice outline to kind of think about as you're considering also maybe other consulting firms, you know, just kind of a, a nice process to be able to go through as well. So stay tuned for that. That will be in your inbox. Um, we have a rapid fire question. We're going to hit with all three of you, uh, our wonderful speakers. Um, in a, in a kind of like a quick snapshot, uh, why did you choose Propeller? What, what was that, that kind of big takeaway that got you really excited to join the firm? Um, and I'm gonna start with Tatiana because you are right here looking right back at me right now. <laughs> yeah, so I think I touched on it actually my previous answer, but it really boils down to the people. Uh, it's rare to find people not uh, you know dedicated to refining their craft and up-leveling their careers and just really dedicated to producing good work, but also actually building a community and a firm where you feel supported. Um, because I know I, I'm not only able to grow and learn at this firm with my skill set and my experience, but that I was able to have the community and the support and the tools that I need to be able to do that in, in a way that I want to do it. So it just boils down to the people for me. I love it. Thank you very much. Akil, what about you? Why, why Propeller? Um, I think it was hit on quite well um, in the sense of definitely commit to people. Uh, the people really make the difference. Uh, it stood out to me uh, initially, even when I reached out to Propeller. I did interact with individuals at other consulting firms, and I didn't get the same kind of warm, supportive, collaborative um, feeling uh, when I initially dealt with them. Uh, but really within the firm, everyone is so supportive, willing to help. Uh, the way they respond, it, it's a much more collaborative atmosphere than I've had in the past. Um, and then finally, I think just the alignment that I had with the ethos and the company values just really kind of um, 
stuck out to me. Uh, and I'm happy to say I've noticed that the firm actually practices it. And I love the way leadership does respond. They listen and they respond, which to me is a huge differentiator you do not find across other companies. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun to be able. We at our last offsite, we got our um, actually our little ethos and manifesto pins, which was really fun to be able to like truly wear those as we were able to connect with people at our, our last company offsite too. So thank you, Akil, for sharing that. Noel, what about you? So um, for me, the biggest thing I was looking for was um, a good culture. Um, the organization I was in, it was it wasn't the best in supportive culture um, in, in a lot of cases, right? Um, so to come in from an organization that really wasn't supportive in a lot of ways, um, never really patted you on the back, never helped you, um, you're kind of basically on your own. To come into an organization, actually read the reviews and say, oh, like the thing that caught my eye was like the, the reviews and the ratings of how, you know, propeller people, do they enjoy working for you? And you, you read this, you're like, oh my gosh, they actually do like being here. Um, and I mentioned culture shock, like when you do get in it, it, it it was like like being in it having like kind of revert or culture shock into this organization where everybody is super supportive almost to a point in the beginning like it was sort of creepy to me that like people were willing to help and like reach out and like no matter what you could ping somebody on slack and they're going to be there to like support you I'm like oh this is super weird is there something wrong and it took months to sort of just realize no it just the people want to help and they'll bend over backwards for you um so yeah, that was my kind of big thing. And I, and I noticed it from, like I said, the, the ratings of how well things are. And then when you get in it, you're like, actually, it truly is the way it is. It's not just the facade. It's not a recruiting thing. It truly is um, really awesome. So the people is the short answer. Amazing. I think uh, our marketing team is on the, the call right now. And I, I think we've found a new tagline, uh, propeller so supportive, it's creepy. I, uh, yeah, it's weird to say. It doesn't sound the best, but I'm being honest, right? I mean, I'm like, it truly is. Uh, it's what happened. <laughs> well, I, I loved it. Um, okay, so I know we're really uh, close to our time. I uh, we're gonna wrap up here shortly. I there's a question in the chat that I really love, so I'm gonna just uh, ask it really quick, and hopefully we each of you can answer really briefly. Um, what is a superpower you've discovered now that you're in your role that you didn't realize you had before? So, Noel, you want to start? Yes. Um, I found that, uh, and I thought it was okay, but I really found it that, like, breaking down really, really super complex things and visualizing them in a way that, like, everybody can understand, um, found that that isn't something other people have. Uh, in my org, it is something that they desperately need. So I found this niche to be able to um, display and, and represent things that they want to get across in a nice, simplified way. So that's my superpower I just found. Awesome. Tatiana? Yeah, so I think um, being able to, yes, condense problems to understand what the problem is and what the solution is, but then also pairing that, um, the superpower, being able to pair that with emotional intelligence and professionalism to be able to build relationships. I think sometimes you'll find really technical, technically focused people that are able to solve problems, but maybe not engage stakeholders or communicate accordingly. So I think it's kind of the, the pairing of the two um, has been really awesome and, and super helpful in my engagements. Awesome. And Akil. Uh, from my end, uh, maybe not as interesting uh, or as exciting, but certainly a pattern recognition would definitely be um, my superpower that I've discovered. You start to see various scenarios and issues that come to fruition very quickly throughout organizations, even across industries. You do start to notice, similar to how you would in econ, uh, you see these various patterns and you start to see uh, frequent solutions. And from there, you can be really build on them and find, hey, solutions that have worked in the past, or you could try something new, test it, iterate. Uh, the biggest takeaway I've had is more than anything, it's a skill that you can keep building on. Whether you stay in consulting, go out on a future adventure, it only helps you in the future. Um, so it, to me, it's really something that stands out. Awesome. Thank you. I love that all three of those answers were so unique. Um, that's really cool. And uh, thank you so much to our panelists for your time and for sharing your stories and 
pers uh, perspectives on everything. We really appreciate it. Um, so to jump into wrapping up, um, we are hiring. Uh, we have many open roles currently on our website. Um, I believe we have uh, over 20, yes, with our new geos. Um, so we're hiring for change management consultants, uh, business or management consultants, data and analytics consultants, and technical project and program managers, which the internal title for that is consultant as well, um, but just wanted to be more descriptive with the title. Um, so these are our current openings. You can check them out on our careers page. Uh, following this interview, we will be uh, sending you an interview quick guide, which Dory mentioned earlier. Um, we also definitely encourage you to check out our careers page. It also highlights some things about working at Propeller, as well as our benefits that we offer, um, and some stories of uh, different folks at the firm. Um, and then we encourage you, if you're interested and, and you're not sure how your background fits into consulting, schedule an informational interview with one of us. So. If you are looking at Denver, Minneapolis roles, you can reach out to me. Um, if you're looking at the Bay Area, so San Francisco, Silicon Valley, or Dallas, uh, you can reach out to Dory. And if you're looking in the Portland area, you can reach out to Teresa. Um, all of our roles are still locally based. So even though we are doing uh, work remotely, we do require a location close to one of our main offices. So just something to be aware of. Um, but we absolutely encourage you to reach out to us, um, chat a little bit about your background, and we can talk to you more about Propeller. Um, so I really want to thank everyone so much for the time that you spent with us today. I know we're at time and want to be respectful of uh, your day. And um, thank you for carving out some time to learn about Propeller. Um, and hope you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day.